Okay, so we've got all three pieces for the base of our, our modular phone stand. Here's an example of what it should look like, finally. Um, these three pieces should all be cut now. We've got our holes drilled. Um, and what we're going to do now is a dry fit to check everything is correct. Also, any areas where you've recently cut, um, you might have some new splinters. So get some of the yellow sandpaper, which is the finer sandpaper. It won't take off too much, but it will remove splinters and tidy up your work. Also, like inside corners in here, you want them to be nice and sharp. So just fold a bit of the paper and just rub that in the corner there. Where we've curved these ends, um, we'll have quite sort of splintery edges as well. Just want to round those off. Where the holes are, you'll find that the wood has splintered a little bit there as well. Just want to give that a good sand. Uh, keep your pencil marks on for now. I'll tell you where everything goes, how it goes together. We're just tidying up the work, removing splinters. Because if you get a splinter in between where you're joining the wood together, like where you're gluing it, it can push things out of shape. Okay, the other thing you'll need is uh, a dowel. This is a natural wood dowel, so this is taken from uh, straight from a tree and cut into the shape and dried, um, whereas this is manufactured wood. So it's made in layers. It's cut from, from a tree, but it's made in, uh, cut into layers and then glued back together. So this makes it a manufactured wood. So we've got a base as well. We need this, so you can get this from the teacher. So um, we've got B here, that will go at one end. Um, and then we've got A and C. And we want to make sure that um, the groove, this slot here, is on the inside. If you're lucky, your base should almost exactly be the right size. You don't need to change the shape of the base. You might only want to take a little bit off of it on the sanding machine. So that fits together nicely. And um, I can see that my edges are meeting up. There's not much of a gap, so I'm happy with that. If, um, if your edges or your, cor your inside corners here are a little bit rounded, not quite sharp enough, you can use a flat file just to file those inside spaces to shape them back to your pencil line a bit closer. Um, with the dowel, it's a bit tight to get into the holes that you've drilled, so my advice is just take some sandpaper and just wrap it around the end of the dowel and sand round a few times. And that will just slightly adjust the, um, the diameter of this dowel so that it goes in a bit easier. So one side's going to go into A. We're doing this is a dry fit, so we're not putting any glue in yet. Um, to get these in, it's good to push in and twist at the same time. And when you get the other side on, you want to make sure that they go on nice and parallel with each other. So you see here, this one is slightly out of line with the one at the back. Just want to slightly adjust that. You can use a table surface test. If one corner is sitting off the table, you know that they're not parallel with each other. So just kind of tweak them into position. So the dowel should come up flush with the surface on the outside here. Maybe a little bit too far on that side. And then those two back bits. should fit together with that
comb joint. So you're left with this. Now, um, if it's the end of the lesson, I suggest at this point you should probably mask and tape your work, write your name on it and your DT group, put it in your box. Um, but we can show you how to glue this together now because it looks like it's ready. Okay, so um, I'm using uh, some wood adhesive. Um, this is light PVA. Um, it sets in about 15 to 20 minutes. It will hold the wood in place, but you need to wait a good 24 hours for it to be a really strong hold. Got some of these disposable milk top lids. Um, that's what I put the glue in because they can just go straight in the bin afterwards. So um, when we're coming to fit this together, um, I would do it in this order. So I'd first of all, take everything apart. And remember if it's a bit stiff to get it out, twist it and pull. So we want to use, we want to glue the dowel first. So I'm just going to kind of dip the edge of the dowel in and just rotate it. So the glue's like around the edge there. And we want to get a red gluing tray, one of these plastic trays. And place your work inside there. So I'm just going to push that end of the dowel that's got the glue on it into that hole. And I don't want it to come out further than just being flush with the surface. So I just check my finger. Too much glue here, so a little bit of paper towel just to wipe that off. So I'm going to glue up the other side now. This is a little bit trickier. Can use, I've got a spatula here. Could use a little bit of spatula. Get some glue on one side of it. Just dab it around the edge on the end of the dowel. Fit that in. Just make sure you don't push it any further than you want it to go. Just kind of rotating it. Little bit of glue overspill there. Just wipe that off. <clears throat> check it against on the base and also check this back bit fits. Okay, so the next bit is we need to glue this onto those. So think about the bits that go together where it's going to touch the other bit of wood. So on this piece, um, I know that it's going to, well, this pencil doesn't work. going to put some glue here and here because those surfaces are going to be touching. We're going to put some glue here and here and here and here. You don't want too much glue. You don't want it to ooze out too much where the wood joins.
push those into position, pull them together, check for any glue that's oozing out. You want to address that before it dries. go so you can leave that there to dry make sure that you've got your name on it you don't really need to leave the base with it you can put that in your folder but it'd just be good to make sure you've penciled uh, your name and your DT group onto the inside also you can do one check just to make sure that everything's accurate You can use a, a steel ruler and you can measure uh, this length here, so that's uh, 100 millimeters. And then I might measure this end, and if that's also the same, so that's 100 millimeters, then I know that both ends are the same width and that it should be square. And my last check to see if it's square is just put a tri square next to it. And if there's no gaps on the side of the tri square between the wood, and you know that these are right angles as well. Okay, good luck.